Hello friends, today I'm going to be talking about hematology and specifically I'm going to be concentrating on the pathology aspect of hematology and uh, to know how the pathological aspects of hematology are being asked in the questions nowadays for the PG entrances, you need to know the development of RBC, reticulocytes and the structures basically which comprise of the membrane structure of an RBC. Today we are going to learn first the development of RBC. As a baby, as a fetus, the hematopoiesis in your body starts to be specific on the 19th day at the start of the third week. It usually goes on till the 12th week where you have this series of events and they change the reticulocyte developmental stages. And uh, when we start looking at the hemoglobin initially which is being de which develops in a baby, it is of mainly three stages before it is converted into fetal hemoglobin. First hemoglobin is GOVA1 which is composed of two zeta and two epsilon chains. Then GOVA2 which is composed of two alpha and two epsilon chains and then Portland hemoglobin, Portland 1 which is composed of two zeta and two gamma chains. After all these stages, the hemoglobin what we get is called as fetal hemoglobin and fetal hemoglobin is composed as we all know of two alpha and two gamma chains. In an adult, we all know, we all contain adult hemoglobin which is usually 96 to 97 percent. Adult hemoglobin is composed of two alpha and two beta chains and there is another hemoglobin which is diagnostically only important. It is not that important when it comes to the pathology of diseases and that is HbA2. That is HbA2 is composed of two alpha and two delta chains and that amounts up to 3.5 percent of the total hemoglobin. The significant switchover which happens in a baby, it starts at the 30th week and it continues until the 38th week. When coming to reticulocytes, we see there are also different stages how a reticulocyte develops after it starts developing from a stem cell which we all know are pluripotent cells and they can develop literally into any cell of the human body. They start developing, the first stage of these fetal reticulocytes would be pro-erythroblasts and then you would see pro-normoblasts and then you would come to the normoblasts. The pro is removed, the prefix pro is removed, pro-erythro, pro-normo and normoblast. The important thing to remember is pro-erythroblast is the stage where you can see reticulocytes with supra-vital stains or electron microscopy. Normoblasts, they also have three stages, and uh, early, intermediate and the late. And the important stage here is the intermediate normoblast. The intermediate normoblast is the stage from which you can start seeing the reticulocytes with the normal stains, that is Romanovsky, Jimsa, Jenner stain, Wright stain, these are all the normal stains for RBC, for reticulocytes to be specific. And then the last stage is reticulocyte and the important thing about reticulocytes is it gives you a sense of how your system, the hemopoietic system is working when you are in the stress. When it comes to hemolytic anemias or the nutritional deficiency anemias, these are two different scenarios and you can actually diagnose them by just glancing at the reticulocyte. So, 0.5 to 2.5 percent is the level of retic reticulocytes as we all know and in hemolytic anemias when your body usually has the time to compensate the retic counts are increased whereas in all the other anemias we have been talking about like the defici nutritional deficiency anemias there you do your body does not have actually the time to compensate so your retic counts are going to go low. And if you are talking about reticulocytes in the pathology aspect then we need to know the stains which are the supra vital stains or the special stains and they are new methylene blue, brilliant crescent blue and the crystal violet stain. So we have discussed about the importance of the development of hemoglobin, the development of reticulocytes, the meaning of the retic count why it is important in the clinical diagnosis of all the hematological conditions and you need to also remember the different uh, chains the alpha, beta, zeta, epsilon, delta these are all the different chains of all the fetal hemoglobins which are being asked repetitively in all the competitive exams and uh, 
We have also seen the supravital stains, the brilliant crystal blue, crystal violet for the reticulocytes which are also important. Thank you.